So um, what are some of the things you're doing now since you're out, man? So, you know, you have all this free time on your hand and, and trying to, you know, reacclimate. So I've been out seven years this October 22nd. It gives me seven years of being home. Um, no parole. I mean, I was on parole for, the, you know, I would have been on for five. Okay. They cut me off at three. Um, and when I came home, I already had a job. I was working for a family member doing electrician work. Okay. So basically digging ditches, yeah. right? And going in rafters and pulling cable and doing all that stuff as an electrician would do. You know, residential, building homes. And, uh, and like, I guess I had like menopause, right? <laughs> <laughs> and at, at like 34, right? And I was like, I can't be doing this shit. Like, this is <laughs> fucking killing me. Yeah. And, and again, that, that epiphany of the, the moments that you have inside that, you know, another little switch, mm. another little gear that switches you to take a different angle. And I said, I'm gonna get into, uh, I'm going to get into the movie business, right? Um, That's what I want to do. And so I didn't know how to do it. So um, I went through a program through Manifest, but, uh, and give a shout out to them, Dan Steve and everybody at Manifest uh, works. And, um, but I went ahead and I was calling up production companies and and saying, you know, like, I just, I'm I'm not a, you know, veteran PA and blah, blah, blah. (laughs) And and I just started hustling it and, uh, and someone gave me a shot. That's all I needed. Give me one mm-hmm. shot. Mm-hmm. And so I was a PA at 34 years old mm. amongst kids who are coming out of film school like, yeah. at a USC. They're like, so what do you want to be? I want to be a director. I'm like, fuck, just give me a job. Yeah. That's like, just give me a job so I can make some yeah. money. And, um, and I did. So I, I, I carved this crazy niche and, and I was a PA for about three and a half years. And, and here I stand at, what, 30 and I'll be 40 this November. And, um, and I'm a few days away of getting, uh, being local 399 for a Teamster. Oh, and great. so, yeah, thank you. And uh, I drive trucks for the movie business. And mm. right now we're on a show right now. And, and um, uh, yeah, and I don't want to say it pays the bills or anything like that, but I grinded, mm. you know. And, and to, uh, to also go back a little bit, that's fast forwarding seven years now, right? But when I first initially came home, um, you know, I went and gave back. So I stayed with ARC as, as an organization, and that's a nonprofit organization. And then also IOW is a nonprofit organization. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, Inside Out Riders, and um, and it's still to this day I function with them. I still you know talk with them, and I'm still a part of it, and I'm still part of this that lifestyle of giving back. And, mm-hmm. and anti anti recidivism coalition is more of them trying to change laws. So they go a lot to Sacramento, and they speak, and they talk to you know cabinet members and everybody else up there, and they they push law. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, they these guys, and I think 85 percent of ARC is ran by inmates. Mm. So it's not, you know, and Scott Bugnett, yeah, it was his baby. Like, he started this, but he just grew. And it just grew, and he knew it was bigger than him. And I think that's such an honorable thing to know that you turn it over to these to people like ourselves Mm -hmm. and say, now run a business Mm -hmm. and run this organization. And so, and these guys are doing it. And and I tip my hats to these guys all the time. And not, you know, I can't say that I'm on forefront with them anymore, like Mm -hmm. constantly with them on on the, on the, the pavement. But... This, uh, but that organization really paved a way. So I gave back. So um, went to New York, spoke at spoke at Rikers, mm-hmm. been to see these things, been to different other multiple areas of, of you know other organizations trying to find you know for money for money. Like mm-hmm. you fund these organizations by going out, and putting yourself, standing in front of That's other right. people, yeah. and telling your, your story. Yeah, yeah, and your example, and you're telling your stories, and you're telling this these things and you do stand naked in front of these people and you're being so transparent and so, um, uh, just, yeah, I mean, you're being so transparent where it's, it's, you're being vulnerable. You're wearing your heart on your sleeve and you're, you're like, you know, you almost see me get emotional talking about family and that's happened years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to this day, I still get like emotional for that because it's like being in front of those people and and giving back and being emotional. You stand like, I mean, Harry Belafonte, I mean, what an advocate for, for human rights. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to be sitting in a room with that man after doing 14 years in prison, and you're talking about, talking about, you're talking about Malcolm X, you're talking about freaking, you know, King, you're talking about Doc, and, and, and this dude is sitting there telling you these stories, and you're like, and, he, and, and the crazy thing is, is Mr. Belafonte is looking at every single one of us, and he's like, and I see every single person, somebody can be a king, somebody be a JFK, all somebody the potential. can, and all the potential, and, and all of us staring at him, we're like, mouth open, gawking and hearing such a powerful movement from this dude like it those are life-changing moments you but know? see just like how you said that his words were power and it's life-changing mm-hmm. it's the same thing 
you're going to do with this interview because what you say can affect somebody thousands of miles around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, our interviews, I've had kids come out and say like, man, man, thank you for having that guy on your channel. Dude, it, it totally changed my life. I was going through a rough period because there's nobody out there giving them that belief in self. Right. So you actually give these kids hope, man, and social media has allowed that because they didn't have that when I was growing up. They didn't, I didn't have oh, no yeah. outlets, you right. know what I mean? Never, like, yeah. There was nobody, yeah. I mean, you had to, like you say, you look in a magazine, you'd write the magazine or try to do right. this, you right. know what I mean? Cut out a coupon. Skateboard, and, yeah, you try and to it, yeah. write Thrasher, hey man, there was no phones. There was no phones, I mean, yeah. You couldn't film video. I mean, it's like you had the old Polaroid, so it's like, now it's, we have mm -hmm. this opportunity to put it out there, man. And I mean, I just think it's great because your message is, is so powerful. And like you said, how Harry Belafonte affect you, you can affect other people. Yeah, and it's just, um, I thank you. Appreciate that. And, and um, uh, recognizing, I think I, even after being home seven years and there's a dry period because you, you do kind of go out and work on yourself again. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's weird because you come out and you think you have to just, again, hit the ground running and make movement, you know? And it's like, and the only thing that was gifted to me was having a family still be there in that sense. Mm -hmm. Nothing was handed to me. Um, the job was handed to me. I quit the job to get my own job, mm -hmm. to know that, wait a second, I need to do this. I need to do things on my own. And um, sometimes when you trip and stumble, you go back to their mentors. And, and luckily enough, I have a great mentor and, and I have no problem. Uh, uh, um, Todd Rubenstein is one, you know, uh, great man. Uh, guys in my business like Sean Neal, Peter Hopeland, um, you know, people that I can reflect and still tell my story without being judged. Mm -hmm. Or I can go to these people and talk to them, Scott Budnick, you know, um, Cher Bonacci. Uh, these are people who are just, you know, your own parents, people who stand for you in, your, in, in corners, like, you know what I mean, that they don't even know what they do for you, like, that you meet. You know, and how they change your life to know that you're a good person, to know that you knew that you're always a good person, right? You were always meant to be who you are today. You know, and that's the way I look at it. It's like, I, always, I am becoming the person that I was always meant to be. If so, you could say something to a, a youngster out there or a young adult, somebody who's maybe in the life or somebody who's like kind of confused or looking for some type of guidance, I mean, what would you tell them about the biggest misconception about that whole, you know, lifestyle or just what they think is cool because i know i had a, a hell of a wrong warped interpretation of it and it got me into a very dark place but how what would you tell them as far as just to give them a little insight and advice um i'd say i mean because a lot of things <coughs> we're dealing with emotions right mm -hmm. and as a male you i don't know if, if you have a father figure or you don't or it's a stepfather or it's an uncle or it's somebody it's like you know um we're taught to be stripped you know what i mean you know it's it's not okay to feel that way, you know. Be a fucking man, stand up. Mm -hmm. You know, don't say fucking man, 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 fucking knuckle up, dude. You mm -hmm. know, and um, I, I think at that time right now, whatever emotions the person's going through, kid, 15, 16 year old, 19, 25, 30, it's okay to feel that way. It's understandable to feel that way. Mm -hmm. But there's a thing in time where we have to kind of just ask for that help. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to talk about That's it. That's the hard part, though. It's it, it, fucking biggest fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Biggest like, fear. Oh, I don't see I'm weak. I'm weak. Right, you know I'm weak. Nobody, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a pussy. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. Right? I'm going to be honest. I'm yeah. a fucking faggot. Or yeah. what the yeah. fuck? You know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and get it together. Get it together. together yeah. and, and be a fucking man. And blah, yeah. blah. And I know those are derogatory words. But those are words that, yeah. as, as a male, like, it's demasculating. Mm. You know? And it's okay to feel that. It's okay to stand, you know, not literally, you know what I mean? But stand raw, mm -hmm. stand naked in front of somebody and be like, dude, this is what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Like, cause there's people where I sometimes don't want to talk to these mentors or, and, and if not, seek help. Like, this well, you the know biggest, the thing like is, go see a, see a psychiatrist. Like, that was like, dude. Getting that out sometimes keeps you from imploding. Cause I know sometimes, you know, I have a lot of bottled up stuff and I'd be like, you know, but you don't want to, cause you hold that, it might be like the conversation we had earlier, that dude over there, and you're like, Okay, well, you know what I mean? You just, right, yeah. you, you know, mess around and do a molly wop, and then, damn, I got a cow, just, oh, fuck, man. Yeah, because, and that, that's you the thing, I mean? like, if you're on the end, like, that's the problem, like, in, on the inside, you can hit somebody, and they can fucking, you can knock a tooth out, or you do something, battery. Yeah, yeah. It's another charge. Yeah. Stabbing somebody, dude, life sentence, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, great bodily injury, like, you're done, dude, yeah. like, and so these environments, like, you know, and, it, you know, and look, we, we haven't touched so much, because you have so much other on, on 
on frame from other people talking about what's the environment's like inside prison and, and that fear factor of that, that lifestyle. It, the thing is, is like you have to recognize if you know out here in society, you know you're fucking up. You know you're getting tripped up. You know you're doing things that are wrong. You know you're looking at, I mean, I don't know what the age group of people who are watching it or people who, you know, at their age, even if you're 35 and you're fucking, you're fucking up. You know, it's like, it's okay. You can still go back and restart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And this is talking from, I started again at 34. No bank count. I had to learn how to do a bank count. I learned how to do, I didn't even know how to even learn computers, right? That's I mean, this is I'm saying, right? Cell phones, like, <clears throat> yeah. So what, you get to see cell phones on the inside? Dude, you don't want to touch those, man. You don't yeah. want any information. <laughs> you don't want to put your yeah. fucking hands on those things. I don't care if you think you're cool or not. And that's a whole different, like we we're saying, there's a false sense of reality in that environment to coming out to this reality mm -hmm. and learning how to pay bills, learning how to be a decent human being out that's here. Right, that's and right. I think that's the harder factor because I still trip myself sometimes. I still let my emotions go. I still let my thoughts carry too far. Like I have a person who tells me all the time, your, your mind's spinning. Your mind, you're, you're thinking way too much over this, you know? And you're like, oh, all right. And you, you get grounded. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and, it's, and it's strange because if you don't have that, even even getting lessened at 40 years old and hearing your mom talk to you and you're like, you want to just like, uh, I'm not 13. You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden that ego wants to come out. Murder the fucking ego. You know, be in, a, yeah. be in an army of you, yeah. right? Be the best army of you. And, but murder the ego, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the hardest thing to do is, and we all have it. We all carry it still. Like, right? I mean, we know that we have that prison. We can go ahead and I can take my shirt off and boom, I'm, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm fully shirted with tattoos. It's mm -hmm. like you have that environment. You carry it like your samurai sword. But you, sword, you, you humble know? yourself. But you humble yourself. And yeah. you realize the value of what you have as a second chance. That's and that's right. the thing. When, for my instance, and that's all I can talk about is my instance, for, for young youth out there or for individuals out there watching this, and, and it's never too late to start over. It's never too late to say, all right, stop regroup, right. function, if I have to live in a halfway house, if I have to go, if I'm on dope or if I'm on drugs, seek help. I mean, because a lot of times we don't, we think we're so far gone from that and we're not, you know what I mean? We still have 40 years and you know what? We can die tomorrow. Okay. But you know what? At least I started over and then I got hit by a bus, That's right. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, and, or, or I did something where someone saw me start doing something better. Um, I don't, I used to just use things, and what was funny, I'm gonna, I'm gonna backtrack for, for a little bit. So I was in prison teaching how to people to get out of prison. I was trying to, it's like a reform class, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so, and I'd get the questions, guys who'd always ask me, what the fuck, I gotta listen to you, bro, you're a life, you're never going home. And I was like, but you know what? I know what I need to do when I get home because I'm teaching you motherfuckers what to do, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I know every single step what's yeah. going out there, right? And. And it was kind of ironic. It was like a, uh, it was like slap in the face all the time, you know, because you always had some one, one guy who didn't want to be there, but you have to take the class, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, a yeah, it's, uh, qualification. Yeah, it's a quality, right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, for you to, to go home. Mm -hmm. And no lifers were taking it or anything like that because you couldn't because you weren't going home. Yeah. Right. So it was all these kids who were coming in, and you'd get some guys, you get some OGs, you get some dudes, and they just look at you like, why am I listening to this motherfucker? Like, you're never going home. And, and you know, we were talking about like breaking barriers, right? This is back, like, I don't know if you guys had breaking barriers in, inside there or whatever. And, and I'd show these videos, breaking barriers are, are um, through the blue lenses and stuff like that. And it was showing the, the grab, you know, drug life and, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like, you know, program <clears throat> shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so after a while, I would just turn the video on. I'm like, oh, damn, dude, I'm try to take a nap or something, you know what I mean? But then you get up and you teach a class and you start teaching. I was never, never went to school. I like, you know what I mean? I never taught, you know, I'm teaching grown men in prison or I'm thinking grown men and you start teaching these things. And the next thing you know, it's like to be now fast forward, here we are seven years and still gravitating and going, man, I still think of things like that. Like I go, that's what keeps me humble. You know, that's what keeps me grounded. Knowing that one little mistake, you know, like we were talking about, you know, off camera about the quarter mm -hmm. incident, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like over a fucking quarter, yeah. right? So it's like, and that's a whole different topic for everybody, mm -hmm. you know? But it's ironic to sit there and go, man, okay, this is where I'm at. And then now, 
where are we supposed to be, yeah, right? Yeah. You look down at your feet and you go, <clears throat> fuck, I'm supposed to be right here. Yeah. I'm sitting here talking with Big Herc. I'm on, you know, we're on well, the, It's like when you know? were saying um, the old thing about Buddha, and I, I read a lot of, I studied a lot of religions, and I was very, I'm very spiritual, but I read a lot of different things to try yeah. to get an understanding to figure out how do I make the choices to get to where I'm at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm in here, I'm like, damn, this is insane, man. This place is a dungeon, literally, you know? And, yeah. um, and then when you're reading these you know, philosophy books and the Buddha, he's like, oh, well, you know, spiritually, everybody's where they should be at that moment. I'm like, well, why, why am I supposed to be yeah. here, yeah. man? And and I'm and like, it, it, you know what I mean? I don't like, want to be sit, here. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like, the fuck, worst. man. It's what, the, how yeah. do I get out of this? You know what <laughs> I mean? So it's like, it's, everything's supposed to be, I'm in the dog, man. Oh. I'm like, well, cause I, I see some shit. I see the Matrix. I see the fucking code. And I'm, yeah. I'm like, dude, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go, you know? Yeah, so like, that's why I kept going to the law library. Fuck. That's so, I mean, and plus it was a way of getting out of Seldo too, right? I mean, yeah. I mean t- typically to get away from that environment and put yourself out of that environment and out away from all the shenanigans, right, you right, know what I mean? That's and right, that's we right. all find our outlet, we, yeah. outlet crutches, right? Mm-hmm. You know, some crutches, dudes are shooting dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dudes are getting high. Yeah. People yeah. are making Bruno. Yeah. People yeah. are doing all these things. And yeah. people want to be the tough guy on the yard. Everybody wants, to, someone wants to be a shot caller. Someone yeah. wants yeah. to want their hands to be called. Dude, never was my cup of tea. Yeah, me either. Dude. Nothing. I let me do art. Let me do something. Let me mm-hmm. find my outlet and generate. You know, it's, <clears throat> it's that. So that's what. That's how I found that outlet. But to be here and to finding the outlets out here now, and and, and to be giving back and stuff like mm-hmm. that. The crutches that we have now. It's like, don't smoke weed. What do you do? You know what I mean? Still read? Yeah, I still read. You know what I mean? Do I, I still like a? Tr- you know, I don't. I can't sit on a Kindle. I can't stand, No, me either. You know, I gotta go buy I, books. I gotta, I gotta go Barnes Noble. Yeah, yeah, so I still gotta, yeah, I still gotta read a book. Same thing. Um, uh, phones are the devil. You know, the goddamn <laughs> devil. You know what I mean? Like, you sit there and you just waste your life away. Yeah, you're like, like hour. Yeah, you're like, fuck, it just happened yeah. right now. I'm like, wasted. Um, but, and then there's the thing. It's like, uh, the gym. You know, mm-hmm. and, and my work. And so, my work will take the gym out of my, you know what I mean? Because I'll work, you know, 17, 18 hour days. Mm-hmm. You know, working in the movie business and stuff like that, it takes you, I mean, you're up at like, you know, Crack Monday. Dog, yeah, my, my, yeah, my Mondays, my call time is like 3 a.m. So it's like, I'm up at one. Mm. You know I mean? I gotta get all my stuff done and then, you know, drive a rig in. And so it's like, that's my life, mm. you know? And then so it's like, the weekend should be spent trying to get into the gym, but then you're gonna have a small opportunity <laughs> to do like laundry, life stuff. Oh, you're so fired over there. And so, <laughs> and, and, but it's like those are things that are like you're like oh shit you know what I mean like I'm adulting Mm -hmm. like and this is what we're talking about we're talking about adulting we're talking about making the right decisions now and so what I'm trying to the paradox what I'm trying to show here it's like 14 years ago when I was waking up for the first time in the cell and I used to wake up and I'd say am I going to be happy or am I going to be angry am I going to do something to create another, another negative effect yeah, yeah. Now here I am, fourteen years later, out of prison. Additional seven years now. We're here. It's almost been twenty years now since I fought, started that turn. Right? You know, I'm thirty nine. Mm-hmm. Went in that at that age at nineteen. You know, it's twenty years down the road. You look back, and yeah, it's all hindsight. It's all clear and clear. But I still have a choice to wake up every single morning. So I think that is where. Do I wake up every single morning positive, or be negative? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can I speak? negatively about a person or can I speak positively about a person can I constantly give out only just to give better advice and and I'm not trying to sound like a fucking guru I'm not trying to sound like anything like that I'm just trying to be the better person that I was than yesterday and then 14 years ago and then 20 years ago you know and so when we ask these questions what can you say to this youth or what can you say to another man or what can you say to a woman or anybody who's in those situations and it's like if you want to talk about darkness man we can talk about darkness We've all been there, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And we're, we're the epitome of darkness, right? Like being shipped and casted because we committed a crime mm-hmm. and you're, you're shoved away in these cells and you're shoved away and you're, you're literally shoved in a box basically and they just shut it, you know yeah, what I mean? It's like, bathroom. yeah, it's like a bathroom. I put both my hands, palm, like palm the roof, yeah, I can do everything. Yeah. I couldn't even do handstand pushups in my cell because I was so fucking yeah. tall. And, and these are things that uh, I reflect on. These are things that I wake up every day and I go, all right, I get it. Yeah, this ain't so bad. This ain't so bad, right? I get <laughs> you're like, it. You're my worst like, day out here. Yeah, this is, you know, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm living in the West Side. And, yeah. and, you know, and again, I'm not saying that I have it all together. I don't, you know what I mean? And, and I'm still functioning. I'm still trying to learn. And, you know, it's learning. You, you, if, if you think you have everything, 
then you're the dumbest motherfucker in the world because you don't. Like, you should stay constantly learning. Mm -hmm. You should stay constantly educating yourself on a daily basis. But once you get to that point where you think you don't have to learn anymore, then to me, then that you've, you've lost it. You've lost it. You know what I mean? And being a person, a human, a decent human being, and I'm not saying we hear it all the time, but it's like, you know, functioning, man. Function out here. Live your life out here. Pay a bill. Understand what it is about responsibility. Mm -hmm. Learn about adulting. Learn about relationships. Like, just because, like, all of it. Like, relating to each other, talking to each other. Like, the biggest thing is, like, you know, in that environment, it's like, you can't do this, you can't do that because of color and this and that. You can't sell up because you're, you're afraid of what a person's going to think of yeah. you. And you're like, man, fuck you. Fuck you. You know what I mean? It's like, I love people, like, in that environment that, you know, wasn't my race that I considered a brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That I considered family members. And to this day, it's like the hardest thing to, to know, like, you know, you just know that they're, they're okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you just know that you're standing by. So that's how I try to figure out to be, like, you know, we're, we're talking about what do we do today? How do we do it? And it's, I'm at a point again in my life where once I'm fully contacted in the union and I'm fully done with that and I'm, you know, life is kind of more of a, I know the path, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I know the direction I'm going into and stuff like that. And it's any day, you know, any day now. Um, you know, that's when I'll start going, okay, take that step back go back into the environment, you know what I mean? I'm talking about with the, with the organizations and mm -hmm. non -profit organizations and be able to show yourself, say, hey, I made it to this point and Give I know an I'm an example. And I can still, I, I do it to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, I still go back to like Manifest Works and we still talk about that stuff and that's for like, you know, troubled youth and we get them into start PAing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We show them how cameras work. We show them how, you know, different trades that you can get into different unions inside, you know, where a lot of these kids you know, you only dream about it. Like, you watch a movie mm. be made. How does a movie be made? Okay, there's editing, there's this, there's that, there's a film, there's can't, you know what I mean? And mm. there's so many different orthodox, orthodox methods to filming. And so it's like, you know, we help this, these kids go through there. And then there's these other kids, like, you know, through IOW, through Inside Out Writers, teaching creative writing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to say it's a form of therapy because you don't want to say that to a kid who's 15 years old facing yeah. a life sentence, yeah. you know what I mean? Who's like 15 and the youth authority is like gangbanging still, you know what I mean? And, you know, he's, it, you, you don't, you know, you just, you teach them, you know, let's see you write. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Everybody, you know, everybody, we're talking about rappers. We're talking about all that stuff, right? Let's see you, what's your poetry skills like? You know, or like, how do you, let's see how you formulate a letter. Channel the energy into the Yeah, channel something in a different direction. And, it, and, and we can do that even out here. Like you're talking about, you know, instance, people could be having a bad day. People, you never know who you can change a life by just saying, you okay? Mm -hmm. What's going mm -hmm. on, man? You know? And I think uh, prison builds a callus on us as humans for that interaction, for that compassion, mm -hmm. uh, for one another. You know what I mean? And so coming back out to the streets and shucking that environment and, you know, literally washing yourself for that environment and... And, you know, like breaking down, because no one teaches you how to break that down once you leave. No. You know what I mean? There's not. You built that up as a protection mechanism. Right. And so there's, there's, nobody, there's no instructions, what I'm saying. It's yeah. like you get home and it's like you expect to, things to be, some kids expect, or some men and some women expect to be things are handed to them. And then there's the other side who doesn't get anything handed to them. And then you have to learn how to, okay, how do I get a job? Or how do I even like, you know where do I start? Like, do I go over here? Like, what are my skills? What are, you know, what do I have? What kind of trades do I have? Apply those. Like, that's why, that's why prison helped me a lot. If I wasn't, I would have fell back on those trades. I would have done auto body. I would have done small engines. I would have figured something out. If yeah. I didn't have an outlet, like was something wasn't just like, you know, I, mean, I wasn't able to get that job as an electrician, you know what I mean? Because for a lifer, you have to have all these jobs and everything set out for you before you even get out. Mm. So I had these jobs because I already applied myself to getting these jobs. So, and luckily enough, I had a, I had a cousin. And so luckily enough, yeah, he owned, he owned a business. But I knew after three months, dude, this is not me. Like, I'm sorry. Love you, dude. Love you guys. But I got to do something for myself. I got to move on. And so to be where I'm at now and to see it, it's like, it's pretty, it, it's pretty shocking even to myself. Like, it is. It's like, in seven years, there's guys, like we've talked about too, like guys who have businesses and stuff like that. Like, you know, I'll, I'll be good. You know what I mean? And, I'm, and, and if any, anything, you know, anything bad happens, I, I've learned how to kind of just 
turn that shuck and just be like, dude, everything all right? Like, what did I do? Yeah. You know what I mean? What, what was, uh, what makes you treat, you know, what made you so angry? What did I, what did I mess up on? Or, or, you know, and I'm just giving those small examples, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so, cause there's so, I mean, dude, there's so much out there, well, so I, much opportunity out here. I think you've given, um, you know, the audience out there with your interview, man, a lot of insight on just how you were able to maneuver through the system and change your life and see things from a different perspective and not fall prey to all the pitfalls and come out here projecting some image that's not productive you know that's 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 more of a positive role yeah. you know because a lot of people you know they 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 put out stuff about prison and they come out and they're 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 not they're, to me they're not putting out the right message you know it's not right. i wish i would have never went man I wish I would have oh, never man. went. I wish I would have, like you said, man, I, I love cars. I, I spent so much money working on I wish I knew how to work on a car. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wish yeah. I would have took a, a, started a business or did something. I wish I would have did anything besides go to prison, man. Yeah. You know, I went there now, so I try to share so people don't go through that, but I wish I never would have went. And you know, the thing is, is, like, we can regret, right? No regrets, you know the joke, like, no regrets, right? Mm -hmm. And, and um, but it's like the things that I probably, like, the thing what I regret is, like, okay, um, Nicholas, you know what I mean? That's what I regret. I regret that I couldn't, I should have been more of a person to do something. So that's what I think I base that, and I hold, I, I hold a lot of uh, a guilt towards that sense, towards myself. I think that's the, the, the drive or the knife, the, you know, the gut, the burning gut thing mm. that, that gets you in the gut. You're like, mm, all right, how do, I, how do I get this to be better? Or how do I change this? And I mean, do I regret, dude, I, God, I can't stand prison. I, I wish I never went, but at the same time, what would I have been? What would you would have been? We would have been like burnouts by the time we were 24 years old, smoking dope or doing whatever, or just fucking around, you know, dicking shit around. You know what I mean? You know, I could have been a 30 year old man, had no direction, you know. And 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 I think the blessing in the skies of it is is we went in that environment and was like, this is not us. Yeah. This is not who we are. Yeah. You've seen you see know the worst I mean? of the worst in like right, yeah. and you see things, and, and you know, off camera we've talked about the negativity and stuff like that, and and and. That doesn't need to be discussed. Yeah. We know we know what goes on in those environments. We know what happens behind those closed doors. We know, you know, you know, fucking, you could, you know, the cries at nighttime when those blood, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, and don't don't think that every person is not staring at their bunk or staring at their ceiling, you know, going, I wish I was home. Yeah. And so I think, um, I think in that environment for myself, like, yeah, I I, I wish I'd never went, but at the same time, it did shape me to make me recognize, um, you know, what we have and, and what, you know, the fortunate, the for, like, dude, I mean, I thought I was never, man, I, I never thought I was gonna come home and see my mom, you know, or my family, period, you know? So it's like, you know, that, that's, to be in this environment, it's a blessing. Well, man, I thank you for, you know, your interview, man, for taking the time and being able to share with our audience, man. and. Um, I look forward to, you know, hearing some more positive things yeah, about yeah. you, bro. Let's do this. You know what I mean? Awesome. Yeah. Nick Hurt, fresh yeah. out. Jesse, Peace. Alpha Dog. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.